Today I want to spend some time talking about security deposits, damage waivers, how to use them, when to use them, what platform to use them on, and potential reactions from your guests. So we've done a lot of learning and experiencing a lot of trial by error, trial by fire, whatever you want to call it. So we have a short-term rental property, mid-term rental property in different states. So it attracts different clientele to both of those properties. In addition, we also have them on a variety of sites like Airbnb, Verbo, Booking.com, and other OTAs as well as our direct booking platform. So one thing to keep in mind is that you're not just trying to figure out how how to structure your pricing, your policies for your best interest. You're also trying to figure out how to structure them for your guest best interest. So a lot of guests have bad experiences with either poor hosts that just take their security deposits without any explanation, or they have experiences with past rental properties like apartments or such where, again, bad landlords and they did the same. So when you're figuring out what to do with your property and what to do with each OTA and how to structure your policies and pricing. This is really important to take into account. I know we've all been there. We've all had those bad experiences where we felt we left the place in great shape. And through that, you know, you leave the property and come to find out like a week or two later, you didn't get any of your security deposit back. And that's a miserable experience for everyone. Factor that in, people who are traveling and staying at places for one to two nights, three to four or five to six, even up to 30 to 60, that could be a huge hit, especially if they're traveling to multiple places, staying at multiple different places. They don't know what to expect or what they can get back. And that might really impact their ability to pay their bills or to travel to their next destination. So think about that. That's really important when you make your decisions. So going in today, we will talk through all these different things and what we've learned from having conversations with our guests and continuing to adjust and improve our policies, our pricing, how we structure things. And again, depending on the property, the location, the rental length, and the OTA the property is on. So let's start with one property. So our property in the Northwest, it's a midterm rental, 30 plus day stays. It's on Airbnb, Furbo, other OTAs. That one's not on the direct booking platform. So that one has a security deposit. Monthly rents range usually four to ten thousand dollars a month depending on the seasonality so a security deposit on that usually is around a thousand dollars give or take depending on how we have it set up right now we have it set up where it's thousand dollars per booking again that's a really easy thing because most guests who are staying longer expect that there will be a security deposit however that being said guests who stay on airbnb don't expect security deposits we spend a lot of time talking with our guests and this is something we've learned through having those conversations. So on Airbnb, that property doesn't have a security deposit. However, on Furbo and the other OTAs, it does. Again, through Airbnb, there is a little bit of protection for hosts and guests with the mediation of Airbnb. It is not a security deposit by any means. You still have to work with Airbnb to get that resolved. However, we spend a lot of time making sure our cleaning team documents before and after. So before the guest checks in, we take detailed photos of the property and after the guest checks out. And that way there's never a hearsay word of mouth like this happened or that happened or which guest did this. We have documentation before and after every reservation. So that's really important also to reassure our guests uh, if there was something that came up that we are 100% sure it happens either during your reservation or not at all during your reservation. So there there is no mistaking guests doing some damage or not. Again, it's putting these policies in place and the processes to make sure you're running it like a business, you know what's happening at all times and no one's ever feeling slighted that something did or didn't happen that they did or didn't know about. So again, having documentation is very important. Uh, so circling back to Airbnb. Airbnb guests don't expect on the whole their security deposits. The system has really gone away from that, that premise Airbnb has done a lot of changes to try to steer away from that. So not asking for security deposits 
uh, either through Airbnb or which is really hard to do now or doing it after booking is important. However, on Verbo, guests do expect security deposits. So that's a really easy thing to run after booking. Uh, again, it's super important to make sure in your listing details publicly that you have a security deposit or a damage waiver and how much the amount is uh, for the stay. So when they book, they know exactly what they're getting and there are no surprises. Guests hate to have surprises after they book that they're like, oh, I didn't know about this. You know, as a host, you can't control that you're gonna have some guests that don't read the listing details before they book. So again, you're gonna have to troubleshoot that depending on the guest and what happens. So midterm properties, pretty straightforward. Security deposit, it's longer stay. Security deposit on other TAs like Verbo and such. Direct booking, not on Airbnb. Short-term rentals are a little different, right? Those usually are short bookings, one to two nights, three to four or five to six, you know, up to 20 nights usually, depending on your location, jurisdiction, what they require, or what they consider as a short-term rental. But Airbnb considers everything 20 nights or longer as a midterm rental. So for short-term rentals, this really comes down to your pricing. Again, following the same logic where Airbnb guests don't expect security deposits, so not doing that for them, but doing it through Verbo, direct booking, and other OTAs potentially makes sense. Again, depending on your area and the kind of guests you have, you might need to figure this out for yourself. So figuring out your pricing. So if you have a house you're charging, I guess this would probably be a guest house or a room in a house you're charging 25, 50, 75 a night, you probably don't want to charge $1,000 security deposit for each reservation. If a guest is staying two nights and they spent $100 and you're charging them 1,000, that doesn't make any sense. And even on their platforms, the guests could be very upset. So if you're running a high-end property, you know, if the property is a million plus dollars, something like that, you're charging four fifty, five, six, seven, two thousand dollars a night. Maybe you do charge a thousand or two thousand dollars security deposit because that is more in line with the price of the reservation. Hi, we just want to take a moment and thank you for watching this video. Please help us grow our channel by liking this video, dropping a comment below, and subscribing to our channel. So again, you're trying to figure out based on your pricing what is a fair security deposit for that stay. You're not trying to account for everything, like if a guest puts a whole through the TV or kicks down a door or breaks a giant window. I mean, those are things that are you're gonna have to solve separately. But this is a deposit to just make sure the guest has additional skin in the game to kind of hold them a little more accountable, especially if you're on a platform that doesn't have some sort of mediation that you could work with them. But again, making sure you have documentation before and after is super important. Another thing you could do is you could make sure you have really good homeowners insurance that accounts for short term rentals and accounts for your furnishings, your loss of income, things like that, that you could work with them if there was a big enough issue where you need to go through that. But to an extent, you're kind of self-insuring and you're just making sure your business of renting these homes could accommodate. There was an issue for whatever that loss would be without, you know, you going bankrupt or something like that. So I think this is super important to keep in mind. Again, you could also do a damage waiver. This is not something you'd want to run through Airbnb, but you could run through the other one. This would be more like your self-insuring, so maybe you'd do a $500 in insurance the guests would get on a $50 or $100 damage waiver where that's non-refundable and the guests would buy that, they'd get coverage up to $500 and then after that, you'd have to figure out what your policies would be. That'd be covered by the guest or covered by you if it went over $500. So those are kind of some things you could do to figure out how you want to run your policies and structure your pricing and things like that. Again, security deposits are really just a temporary hold for the duration of their stay and then release after they check out. They're not a fee that you take and unless there is substantial damage, you're not gonna hold that. You're not gonna charge a security deposit for a stain on sheet or breaking a wine glass. That's more along the lines of a damage waiver or something that you'd even build into your cleaning fees to accommodate those expected uh, wear and tear or breakage items. This would be more something that would happen if like a guest smashes it, you know, a chair or something big that you're like, okay, now I have to replace 
and it's substantial amount of money. So these are some things to keep in mind as you build out your pricing and structure your policies and figuring out what works best for you, your business and your guests. Again, making sure you take that input from your guests and what they give you feedback on and continuing to adjust and tweak everything to make it where everyone's happy, everyone's getting a great experience is super important. We spend a lot of time working with our guests, getting feedback, even when people get upset about things we have set up, we are trying to actively work and improve everything to make sure that we are approaching every property, every market in the best way possible, taking all that feedback into account to offer the best day possible for our guests and the best setup possible for them. So understanding your market, understanding your clientele, understanding what is expected in your area for the length of stay of your property, for the OTAs you're listed on is super important and will help you in the long run, not lose bookings, help you make it a little more passive and automated when you don't have to continuously answer questions to troubleshoot things. And then also make sure everyone's happy at the end of the day and people keep coming back to stay your properties.